brush this is a crown brush that I'm using in another project um, to find out if I like it or not I don't think I'm gonna like it but it's gonna take this one here to set the primer uh, it is actually quite pigmented um, but they are super duper powdery shadows they just kind of go everywhere but I have tried this look before and it turned out fine just got to be careful. I mean, with all eyeshadows, it depends on what they're like. Um, you should probably be careful with them um, if you're not 100% sure. Remember to tap your brush off if they're super powdery or whatever. So you can see in this white one, well, it's not really white, it's cream. I don't know if you can see, but when you jab the brush into it, you just get these like marks in it, which is like really, really weird. Okay, so what I am going to do now is take a, well, it's still sort of a fluffy brush, relatively fluffy. I'm going to go into the light grey. I'm actually going to use it as my transition colour. Now, if you are not cool toned like me, you are going to want to pick probably a warmer toned transition. Now this colour is kind of light so it's going to take me a bit to build up to the colour that I want. So yeah, it depends on what you're using as your transition. You might be able to do it in one dip or you might be like how I'm going to be which is several dips to get the depth of colour that I want. So I'm just going to keep doing that till it's how I want it to be.
looks completely different in the camera to what I'm seeing down here. So, anyway. <laughs> now I am going to take uh, this brush, which is kind of like a C brush, only it's a different brand. It's not an Elf C brush. I'm going to go into this green and I'm going to go back into the crease area and I'm going to darken up the crease. So, trying to be a little bit more precise, not super precise, but a little bit more precise and put it in this area to deepen the crease. Um, as I said, this palette is very much a cool toned palette. If you are not cool toned, use four different shadows that you do like and do the same thing and it will work. And then I'm going to go back to the brush that I used to put in the transition and just blend it a bit. It's best to blend as you go, like add a layer, blend, see how it looks, add more colour if you need it, blend, add more colour, blend, then to add lots and lots of colour and then try to blend it out because some shadows just won't blend if you do that and you're more likely to get harsh lines where you don't want harsh lines. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth adding more colour, blending it out until I get the green how I want it to be. say don't use shimmer shades in the crease. Do what you want. I'm using shimmer shades in the crease. It still works. It's not ideal, but it still works. Alright, so I'm going to go back in the same one that I've used to do the green, because I can. Um, and I'm actually going to use the black. And I'm going to be careful, and I'm going to apply it right here on the outside edge of my mobile eyelid and to the inside edge of my mobile eyelid and I'm going to leave a little spot in the middle and then I'm going to connect the two sides through the crease now this is technically what they call a halo but I don't do it like hugely well, I just do it how I want to. And then the same thing on the other side, just press it onto the mobile lid on the outside corner. On the inside. And then connect the dots through the crease. And then I'm going to take um, I'm going to take the first fluffy brush I used because it's got less colour on it. And oh, just got brush hair in my eye. And I'm just going to blend the edges of that very gently. Get rid of the harsh lines. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, keep going until you get the depth of colour that you want. You need to remember that black is generally a more pigmented colour and 
you will make a mess if you try to go in too hard too fast so just take it slowly build it up a little bit at the time you don't have to go super dark if you don't want you can keep it light or go super dark it's up to you I don't tend to go super dark on the inside I tend to let that one be and put most of the color on the outer corner And I don't mind if it blows out a bit because of my eye shape. It kind of helps a little on this outside edge. And so when you have it how you want it, we are now going to go into the metallic one. Now I've found with this one that the best way to apply this actually with a brush and not your finger, even though it's a cream shadow, it doesn't pick up very well. I also have trouble with my nails getting in the pot properly. But I have found that it seems to be better. It's like this really weird consistency. So I'm going to get some of that on the brush and then I'm going to put it on the bit of the eye that we don't really have any shadow on. Right in the middle. I found with this particular shadow the best thing to do is just to pat it on. And not try to blend it or anything because that does not work. I found if you try to um, blend it, it just goes really weird and patchy. So I'm literally just patting it on. It is super shiny. It's kind of like glue already in um, glitter glue. It's a really weird product. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it. <laughs> so I am just going to use the brush that I applied the black with and just sort of um, blend the edges a little bit with that because it's still got a little bit of product on it. Just so it doesn't look like just a blob of eyeshadow plonked on the middle of the eye. And then we're going to go to the under eye. And I'm going to use this sort of small fluffy brush. And go into the green from here. And just run a little bit under the eye. Make sure I blend it a bit so it's not harsh. And then I'm going to go into a flat angled brush into the black. I'm just going to press that along the lash.
Then I'm going to add some eyeliner and mascara off camera and then I'll be back. So I've applied mascara. I just used uh, my Total Tees and my Clump Crusher. Put on some eyeliner. I haven't done a wing or anything like that. This look is enough without it. This look is enough without doing that. Um, I'm just going to go back into this, into the cream shadow. Just going to add a little bit under the brow bone. And a little bit at the inner corner. look. And I'm aware that this is not a look for everybody. It is a lot. Um, particularly as I'm wearing a fairly full on lip colour as well. But you know, I don't really care about that. I wear a, I prefer a bright lip to a nude lip anyway. Probably would turn it down a bit if you wore a nude lip. Wouldn't be quite so intense. Um, I've found that cool tone looks do tend to be a little bit more um, in your face kind of thing. Warm ones tend to sort of like even when they're really over the top, they don't tend to look quite as over the top. Um, I think you've noticed if you look at a lot of uh, drag queens, they tend to use quite cool toned colours because they do pop a lot more against most skin tones um, and they do look a bit more intense. Um, probably a pair of lashes with this would make it even more extreme than it already is. Um, this is not the first time I've done this look. I often do looks like this. Um, but I admit it is a lot. It's not for everybody. But there are ways of turning it down. Use warm tone colours. Uh, don't build the colours up to such a depth. Let them be a little bit more subtle and it wouldn't be quite so much. Um, yeah, so this is it for this video. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there. Leave me a thumbs up if you like a makeup type look videos. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.